Hello internet and welcome to another video. Today we are back to working on Courtney's Mustang. If you remember in the video where we welded the diff, we took it for a spin and the car doesn't like to kick sideways. And I don't think there's just one particular reason why it drives so funky. I think there's a combination of things. And so we're gonna start slowly addressing one problem at a time. And for right now, we're going to address what we can with the parts that we have in stock. Being Black Friday coming up, I'm gonna order some parts for this car and we can start installing them in December. Uh, but like I said, for right now, we wanna do what we can with what we have, which is doing a battery relocation because on these cars, Ford put the battery in like the worst spot that you possibly could disregard the vice grips. That's another reason why we're doing this is because there's literally vice grips on that and uh, a bungee cord holding the battery. So the battery is not all that secure to begin with. Uh, not only that, but like kind of what I was saying is like the worst location in front of the strut tower, not just slightly in front of the strut tower, but like all the way in the very forward part of the car. That's the worst spot, in my opinion, a battery could be uh, because the batteries are heavy. So a lot of modern cars will have them behind the strut tower, underneath the seat or in the rear trunk already. So this is the worst, again, in my opinion, we're going to make that better. So we're gonna use a bunch of scrap parts. I think I've got, yeah, I've got new terminals. Those are a little bit rusty, but that'll be okay. Good enough for who it's for. And some terminal ends, I'll need that. Also worth mentioning, we're doing this on a budget. That's why we're using these old rusty clamps is because uh, this car is basically just a parts bin car. I'm trying to use as many parts as I already have in the shop already. That way I don't have to buy new parts because I don't want to sink a lot of money into this car. Currently, my total investment is like 550 bucks. That's how much I've got into this car. It's running and driving V6 five speed car, welded diff. Uh, then we're gonna need some battery cable. Uh, see, there we go. I don't know how much cable is here, but I hope this is enough. How much is this? Four, four gauge, which I think is what I used on that car. And I think this is just the remaining of it. So four gauge wire will probably be okay. All right, so the trunk is a bit dirty. There's a bunch of stuff we got to take out of there. Maybe vacuum it out, maybe not. We don't really give a shit. So the idea I have is to run some angle iron held in with rib nuts. Uh, across or maybe even down here. I'm thinking up here because I think the gas tank is directly underneath the spare wheel well on these cars. And uh, so I don't want to go drilling and then drill into the gas tank. That'll take a situation uh, south very fast. So let's just do that. We'll just drill and put rib nuts here. I took the battery out from underneath the hood. This is the concept I was telling you about with the angle iron. And the idea is to see if I can set this. Batteries, kind of heavy. So that type of deal, right? And uh, I could use self tap screws. I don't want to do that. So we're going to use rib nuts. I might have another piece of angle iron that's a little bit longer that will stretch all the way across. And then we'll run our cables. The ground will obviously go to the chassis. That's really not um, all that significant. And then what we'll do is we'll run the positive uh, up through the interior, up into the fuse box. There's a little cover. So with that cover off, you can see the post that goes to the fuse box. That is where the cable from the battery will go to. Real quick before I get started, guys, I do want to say one thing is that I am not by any definition of the term a proper mechanic slash service tech. Uh, I'm just a goofball in a garage with some tools and a car trying to make things happen. Uh, so bear that in mind. So if you see me do something that you think is questionable, uh, feel free to question that because uh, like I said, I am not a trusted expert. All right, so the holes are bored out. We're gonna put the rib nuts in a minute, but one thing I want you to look at 
is uh, be careful if you're following in my footsteps. It looks like I probably hit a frame rail or something because the drill bit walked a little bit. Uh, so we're gonna have to grind this flush so the material has something to sit flat on and uh, yeah, try to figure out a way to work around that. Maybe put a hole in a different spot or something. Learn from my mistake because that was a bit of a doozy. So here is the progress we've made so far. I was able to get a couple more bolts and rev nuts over here on the passenger side. Uh, over on the driver's side, that's not uh, really possible. At least with these pieces of angle iron, they're just a bit short. You can see I'm definitely drilling into something over here, whether it's like the, the frame rail or something. But uh, this end bolt here where this hole is, I was able to, that one there. That one was a good spot to put a rib nut, so that's where it's at. And then obviously that one over there. So, I mean, I'm no mathematician, but that's probably not going to go anywhere, right? The track that we're going to be going to is fairly wide open. It's not like there's any walls to hit. And uh, Courtney being a beginner, she's not really going to be out tandeming. So the chances that this car is going to see a rear end impact to where it's going to be enough force to like rip out six M6 bolts, I would be shocked if that ever were to happen. And uh, if we're ever in a position where it could happen, I would just say, hey, uh, don't do that because your battery's not uh, rated to hit a wall at 80 miles an hour. So like I said, that'll probably be okay. All right, so the next step from here is we're gonna want something to secure the battery to the angle iron. Now, if only we had a Mustang laying around that already had the battery put in the trunk um, then we could just steal parts off of until like the hardware store opens tomorrow. Actually, we have that one. So we're gonna come over to my car and I'll show you the parts we're gonna steal off of it. Fairly cut and dry, very simple. So this is my rear setup. Uh, we're gonna take this bracket and these J hooks off. So this whole setup here is what we wanted. Now we can come over here and if the batteries are the right size, this should work. This, make sure you're actually in frame. That will slide over that. This piece will go up underneath. Boom, actually it's not on because the batteries actually aren't the same size. The battery in Courtney's car is slightly bigger, so this bracket's not going to fit. So I'm not comfortable running that. We're gonna have to come up with a different solution. Maybe I take like some angle iron and run it across top to another section down underneath. Now I'm pretty comfortable that's gonna work. I'll reuse those bolts and then this car will get new ones to replace these ones. That sounds like a solid plan. All right, so I went ahead and tightened everything down. This is what I did. Like I said, cut the angle iron, put my J bolts through. Uh, everything is nice and tight, nice and secure. I can, I feel like at least get quite a bit of force on there. I bet I could lift the car up with this and it would be fine. It actually worked out really well. I don't know what size angle iron this is, but it literally fits perfectly uh, between these two cells here. So that's great. It's not gonna like slide back and forth. Uh, it's clamped down pretty good. That probably isn't going anywhere. So up next, we need to address putting cables on this thing. So I'm probably gonna use this one for the ground and then uh, I'll put like some black electrical tape to uh, help distinguish the fact that it is the ground because I don't have any black cable. And then we'll use this rusty, crusty old battery terminal. It's actually brand new. It's just been sitting in a bucket of water and that's where it got contaminated from. But we'll put that there and uh, probably run it to one of these rib nuts and that'd be a solid ground. And then uh, yeah, take the positive from the battery all the way up to that fuse box in the front. And that's what that'll look like. So like I said, uh, put some black electrical tape around the red wire because I don't want anyone to be confused. And then battery terminal, tighten down there. I did grind down that angle iron. So you can see I cleaned it up just to make sure I got good contact. I'll tighten that up. Like I said, we just got to run the hot wire from the positive side to the fuse box underneath the hood and then we'll give it a test fire. And if everything goes to plan, uh, it'll fire up. So let's get working on that hot cable. I tell you one thing that's kind of interesting is all the parts, bits and pieces to this car, like everything, I haven't had to buy anything new yet. I've just had it in like shelves and in stock. And uh, so it's kind of interesting, the fact that I've been able to build 
I guess it's not really an interesting build. It's kind of a generic, typical build, right? But that I've been able to piece it together so well for so little money. To be under 600 bucks, having a running and driving drift car is kind of neat. So I'm currently trying to fish this cable up into the engine bay. The good news is it looks like it's gonna be just long enough to actually reach the fuse box, which is awesome. Like literally if the fuse box was like another two or three inches forward in the engine bay, uh, this cable would not have been long enough and I would have to uh, go buy a new one. And that's not really what this car is about. This car is not about buying parts. It's about reusing what's available. Reduce, reuse, recycle, right? So these are the results. I was able to get the cable in. Don't worry, it doesn't pinch anything back there. It's literally just kind of floating loosey goosey. I know you don't really want to risk having something like rub through the wire and then you like spark out. So I'm pretty confident that's not gonna rub through. That'll be okay. It feeds into this fuse box here. I do run the cable through the interior. Again, it's kind of just floating like there's no like real tension. I don't think it's gonna rub through, um, but I'll definitely keep an eye on it and maybe make a uh, different version in the future. Uh, but for right now, it just kind of like pinches when you close the door. I run it through underneath this little plastic piece. You can see it kind of poking there and then through the back seat. Disconnected it. Let's see if it fires up. We'll do kind of an initial test. Oh, I can hear it dinging. So this is the first time I've fired this car with the battery in the trunk. Come back and address that. But let's see if it actually fires. We got lights, camera, action. <laughs> well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you do the worst battery relocation uh, on a new Edge Mustang. Some people will say you need to have breakers and um, all that fancy gizmo stuff. I mean, I'm sure it's recommended, like it can't hurt to have the stuff, but if you're kind of balling out of budget, it's doable without it. Like I've got one on this car, the LS car, and I will probably add one in the future. But for right now, this is good enough. If I have any issues, I'll uh, update you guys and, and let you know, but I think it'll be okay. In the coming videos, we're gonna start addressing underneath the car, doing some suspension, maybe some exhaust, because when you heard it fire up, it sounds like doo-doo. So that stuff needs to be taken care of in the near future before uh, this thing can see any type of track time. Luckily, we're going into winter, so it's kind of down season. So. Um, there's plenty of time to address that stuff. We're not in any type of rush, but until the next video guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please hit the like button. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave that down below. Adios.